Hi, I'm BB and I'm talking to Brittany today. Check me out on Global Grind. Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, Brittany, and today I'm here with the real BB Borelli. What's going on, baby girl? Good. Um, so I was like, stalking your Instagram, and I love how you have hashtag free the real on there. Free the fucking real. <laughs> because everybody in this world is like fake as hell. And I always say, when you're a real ass bitch in this fake ass world, you just give people a hair flip. A hair flip. I'm telling you. You say fuck all the hate it is. <laughs> um, we've kind of gotten a chance to know you over this past year. And obviously with the explosion of Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money and realizing that you were the mastermind behind that song. Mastermind. I like that um, word. <laughs> who the fuck owed you money and you wrote that song about? I was just really drunk and like broke at the time and like just had mad anger in me. Yeah. Not anger. Anger is the wrong word. Just mad fire. Yeah. Um, dedicating your life to music has been something that you've been dead set on since you were young. Um, I guess what advice would you give young people who have doubt and who have fear to kind of achieve their dreams and goals? Because you're kind of like fearless. You don't really give a fuck. You're unapologetic. You're unabashed. Where did you get that from? Um, I think that I got it from me being in, abled at an early age, kind of by my dad and, and music, and me seeing, you know, that anything is possible, and being in tune with my purpose. I didn't really consciously think about that question until people started asking me what they interview. You know why? Because us Americans are so <laughs> fucking stupid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but it's like to be honest though. I was like reading an article. It's like how Americans don't travel as much as other people from other countries. Yeah. And I think because we, you know, we've been fed this kind of um, narrative about how America is so great and we don't need to go anywhere else because everything great is here. Yeah. And so when pe we ask you questions like that, like well, how is it in Germany we've kind of been fed this idea that it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people don't have the opportunity or are not able to travel as well. But um, it's the same, you know, it's, it's different in the sense of, like, Berlin was a lot safer than the States. Like, I could get fucked up and, you know, not have to work and dip at 4 a.m. in the morning, not have to worry about someone mobbing me or someone, like, trying to take my shit. But it was, it was dope. It was like, you know, I was this, you know, black girl, like, you know, from fucking with an American dad that went to an international school in Berlin, Germany. And, um... It was crazy because it was like a merging of two worlds because, you know, my generation were like the new generation were le a lot less kind of prejudiced and aren't as homophobic and aren't all those things. Whereas the older generation in Germany is still kind of, you know, stuck in their ways. Yeah. So it was just like two different, it was like so many different worlds kind of in one thing. And then you moved to D.C. for a little bit. Yeah, I moved to D.C. Um, I got really bad grades and... Um, couldn't continue on with like further my furthering my education basically the way I wanted to I kind of still had this idea of like college at like fucking 16 you know what I mean yeah so in order for me to get my high school diploma I dipped to, I moved to DC to live with my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. who my aunt's like my mom you know okay so I went to Howard so mm, no. Um, obviously at Go-Go, especially when I went to Howard, was like a big thing. And my first roommate, she was from D.C. and she used to take me to the Go-Go's. Now, like, over the years, like, the MPD and kind of just, like, the gentrification of D.C. has kind of killed the Go-Go's. And, like, they're not allowed to really have them in the city anymore. They have to go to the suburbs to have them. But, um, did you get a chance to kind of get into the music scene out in, in D.C.? Or? Yeah, I did. I, like, um, I used to work with the homie Nate, who was, like, managed me at the time. It was dope. But um, I did, like, not as a fan, but more as, I mean, a fan still in a way, but not as, like, a consumer of music, but more, you know, behind the scenes. What was your defining moment where you were like, fuck it, I'm just going to pack it up and I'm going to wing it? Um, I've always been that way. I, like, I'm in tune with my purpose. I knew, it, I knew what, what a lot of people don't understand is that I've known that I want to do this shit since I was two. Like, this is, this is something I've been working on my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now, you know what I mean, benefiting and getting real shit off of it. But um, 
it wasn't an option. I was I was out of shit to learn in, in, in the DMV. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As far as music is concerned. I'm not gonna like dedicate my life to something since I'm two and sing every fucking day of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And put my all into something. And then because you tell me that you want me to get in, go to college, do it for you. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> you want me to be this picture perfect girl in a little picture perfect world. But a lot of this, your songs, you seem very like frustrated. Um, you feel misunderstood. Um, and it's like a reoccurring theme in some of your songs. I believe that we're all misunderstood. I believe that like I express that frustration because it's like Fuck, like, when when you're somebody who really wants to be my, like be yourself and you're somebody who's, you know, like, doing things for the right reasons or whatever, and the world around you just is not rocking, like, it's just on some other shit, and you know, like, you're this, you're the, like, you know what I mean, you're, you're your own individual, but you're just not showing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, the fuck? Yeah. I'm the only one? Like, right. Like, I can't be. What do you think it is about society that wants everybody to conform and be the same? I think it's a way of suppressing people. Mm -hmm. I think I think that when you teach people that um, when you convince somebody that anything is possible, like I believe I can do this. It does not matter what you say, doesn't matter what you and we do it all the time. Like we're the only animal that can literally think ourselves to death. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, literally drive yourself crazy. Right. We can think ourselves into depression. We can think ourselves into anxiety, but you can't fucking make your dreams come true. Can we talk about how you got a chance to meet Kanye West? Sure. And how you hung out with him and you did a lot of dope shit with him. Yeah. Um, so I've talked to a lot of people about Kanye and the reoccurring theme that everybody says, like, oh my God, he's just so fucking normal. He's just a guy from the south side of Chicago who lives in truth, who's absolutely fearless. And I feel like you and him are similar in the way that um, you don't have any fear, right? And I rather, like I always have this thing, like I rather like hurt your feelings telling you the truth than hurt your feelings by telling you a lie. And I feel like Kanye's like made it, made it his duty to be like a truth warrior. By the way, just to interject really quickly, mm -hmm. it's not that I don't have fear. Yeah. Because I have fear. You just push through it. I just am, right, I'm winging it. I'm like, okay, fuck this. This shit is scary as fuck. Fuck it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And in addition to what you were saying about Kanye West, Kanye West is, a, is truthfully, and I'm not just saying this because it's like cool to say, yeah. a genius who has changed like music. And it's like, so not just a normal guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's, he's somebody who is enlightened. You know what I mean? Um. So... And, and, he, and he's somebody who, in a couple of years' time, in a few years down the road, not few, let's hope it's many, but when it's after his time, he's somebody who's gonna go down in history for, for contributing like crazy shit to culture. So, you know, I think we should listen to some of the things he said. <laughs> um, wait, do you have any fears associated with fame? Fuck yeah, shit's, I don't, I'm like, an artist who like belongs in the music industry yeah because i i do this shit for real you know what i mean and i, I, and I love it and i i care about people and i i want to be their messenger mm -hmm. full of an industry with people who don't belong in the industry yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah. fame is freaky like it's fucking freaky as fuck yeah you know happiness isn't like a feeling of euphoria right it's just like being cool with yourself. It's just like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, all this crazy shit is happening, but I'm straight. Just like somebody who just, you know, is going through whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. Fucking driving an Uber or, you know, chilling at a bakery where you got their own issues. It's, you know, right. dug in and out and shit's rough, but it's, it is what it is. This is life. Like, welcome to the world. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what does your dad think about all this? Because, I mean, he's a musician, and I know that he's probably, like, super proud of you yeah. as an artist. Yeah. Um, does he give you, like, any advice or? My dad tells me to chill the fuck out when I get on, on the phone and I start popping shit, and I'm like, yo, I'm dope. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> he tries to humble you? I mean, he does. Him saying that to me 
kind of, um, you know, like lowers my ego completely because I respect him so much as an artist. Mm -hmm. So, and it reminds me that I don't know anything. Like, you right, know, like, right. At the end of the day, if I get into the room with somebody that could really play jazz and I try to write a jazz song, they'd be like, you know, I'd, I'd write some kind of pop jazz song. They'd be like, oh, that's cute. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nice try. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. It's like, I love my dad. He's, he's one of the best dads in the world. He is the best dad in the world. Yeah. I grew up freestyling with him, you know what I mean? That's just how I grew up and treated it like a language. So when we play together, I'm singing or whatever, you know, I'll write a song. And I, I believe that he, in the back of his head, or freestyle a song, knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Right. Something I would never say to him. That's dope. I feel like I could talk to you, like, all no, day. Right. I think you're fucking dope. Thanks. Um, you know what I always really appreciate about it's young people who are free thinkers. Because I feel like, you know, a lot of people don't think for themselves. Everything that they get, they absorb it and take that as face value. But I feel like people should question more and ask more questions. Um, just to kind of figure out this life, because it's complicated and you think you have the answers, but you don't. You literally never have the answers, ever. Yeah. Like, everything that you're living, like, what's so freaky about life is everything that you're saying could be fucking wrong, dude. Mm hmm You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that shit is, like, you just have to wing it and be like, I'll try it. Like, <laughs> keep winging it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so when are you going to release a project? Are we dropping an EP first? Yeah. Yeah. We're dropping the EP first, Free the Real. Free the real. Free the real. I like that. <laughs> kind of about like freeing the real, being unafraid to show your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna do an album. If you find, if you know what you love and you're young, do that shit till the death of you, yo. Mm -hmm. And don't let any nobody knows how good you are. You know what I mean, like. Nobody knows how good you are yet. Like, just do it. Like, keep doing it. And your parents might be tripping or whatever and be like, yo, mom, dad, stop wilding. Like, chill. Like, I got this. Like, let me. Yeah. But listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs>